Anytime you're ready. So my topic was philosophy of the modern world, a new approach. Ever since the agricultural revolution, the age of conquest, and even the industrial revolution, one thing has been constant. Ironically enough, that one constant is change itself. And I talk about eras because we're in one right now, the age of information, the age where we could communicate with almost anyone in the world if we really wanted to. And with this responsibility comes a lot of different problems. These problems are, of course, um, enacted by our lifestyle. The fact that we live in urban areas and the fact that we have to communicate and cooperate with so many people online, it causes what I call forced interactions. And so for the purpose of this presentation, I will be discussing abortion. No, just kidding, that was a joke. I will be discussing jokes, however, because jokes are an effective form of one-to-many communication. Jokes and comedy allows us to put forth an idea without any repercussions. It's quick, it's easy, it's effective, but most importantly, it's to a massive audience. And this was a very effective in the past. However, I think that there's something more important that we should look to, many-to-many communications. Edward Kessler, author of Social Media and the Movement of Ideas, puts it very eloquently. He states that this means that everyone's a publisher and everyone's a critic. Not only is there this duality of people putting out their ideas and taking in the ideas of others, but with that, we're attaching our ideas, we're modifying, we're putting something in the comment section below, and we're shipping it onward. And so this is very important because this further implements the ideas of forced interactions, which is going to be the topic of my presentation. And so forced interactions can be found most commonly in communities, such as urban areas or megacities, uh, the work environment, or even online, such as Facebook or Instagram. And so with these forced interactions comes the problem. How do we optimize, or how do we better manage what we get out of this? What philosophical and logical approaches should be used to encourage and enable cooperation in the modern world? Okay, I admit, it's, it's pretty wordy, but we can break it down. So philosophical and logical pretty me much means like the generalized form of it, and um, to en encourage and enable cooperation uh, just addresses the forced interactions. So how we should think and how we should act. Um, the solution to this comes in three main points. It comes with group orientation, yet balanced out with helpful pragmatism, and of course, keeping an objective perspective. Group orientation is basically the bulk of the solution because it puts forth this idea that a group of people is often more important and more impactful than an individual. However, if you do put the group ahead of more than anything else, then this can often cause problems. However, that's why we have pragmatism there. Pragmatism is what I like to call the selfish psychology or the what's in it for me mentality. And uh, this can often balance out if you over exaggerate the emphasis of the group. And if neither of these work, then you still have objective perspective, which removes yourself entirely from the situation, thus removing your experiences, your emotions, things that could clog up your memory or your mind. And so philosopher William James was the first person to come up with this. Um, and he basically said that pragmatism is important and that we should always be concerned for ourselves but we should never forget the group. And so uh, this dictates how we should think. In a letter from Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King Jr. states that we must come to see that human progress never rolls in on its wheels of inevitability. However, it comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of men. And I say men specifically, not man, because this is something that we cannot do alone. This is not something that an individual can accomplish. This is something that a group has to do. And um, progress is ultimately driven forth by a group, and this is something that we can't forget. Not only it's how we should think, but it's also how we should act. Uh, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher states in her speech to the General Assembly that powerful idea is recognition of our shared inheritance of this planet. We know more clearly than ever before that we carry common burdens, face common problems, and must respond with common action. Her idea of this commonality between all people of the world is ultimately what drives forward this group mentality. It correlates almost entirely with the group orientation. And so she puts forth this idea that because we're all humans, because we all live on the earth, because we all have to take care of a planet, there is always going to be something in common with each and every one of us. So no matter what group or what categorization you're in, you can always find commonalities with other people. Um, in James Surowiecki's book, The Wisdom of the Crowds, he states that diversity and independence are important because the best collective decisions are a product of disagreement and contest, not consensus and compromise. He basically differentiates that there are two separate group mentalities that we could have, and he says that one is better than the other. Um, the diversity brought forth through disagreement and contest basically keeps us in check. But if we don't have that, and we just have people who agree with us, almost yes men if you could call them, then we just devolve into something out of control. 
And James Sirowiecki is a New York Times columnist, and he's written a lot of this. This is his life's work. And so the pros and cons of the group mentality idea is that, of course, it's mutually beneficial because it does accomplish a common interest. And of course, with the group mentality, you have to have a group. So then people join. It's socially attractive. It is a movement. It's a march. It is almost a liberation of ideas. And the cons of this are that it is easy to take advantage of because if you're a very adequate public speaker, if you're very good at capturing people's ideas, you can quickly gather a large following to accomplish your means. However, it is very politically charged because this is what most people would refer to as a socialist idea, but for the purposes of this presentation, that's not what I'm going to be talking about. Um, the limitations of this group mentality, of course, is that it is reliant on numbers. There can't be a group mentality if there's no group to begin with and that it requires necessarily organizational support, such as something as the US government or a private entity on its own. If there's no structure to be given to the group, then often people who want the power will just take it for themselves. And this can often be very personal or very privately driven, which just becomes a nightmare. Um, some examples or implications of this group mentality, uh, I put up here recycling because Margaret Thatcher said, okay, we all live on the same planet. The least we could do is I'll take care of it. That's in our best interest. Not mine, but ours. The least we can do is to recycle. Now, if you're very selfish and you think of yourself, oh, what's the difference between putting a piece of plastic in a black bin or a blue bin? Well, once you consider that, yes, we're all a part of this group of people who live here and have to take care of our planet, then it almost becomes a no-brainer that we should recycle. Another example of this would be traffic. Um, according to TomTom Tom Traffic Index, which has been observing traffic in many countries for over six years now, it basically stated that uh, Mexico City, one of the most urban areas, has had horrible traffic, over 60% extra travel time for the past six years. However, in 2017, there were implemented alternatives such as scooters or bicycles. And so what pretty much happened is that people were giving up their self-interest of the comforts of a car, a radio, air conditioning, even a seat. They were doing this for the betterment of society, not only because of carbon emissions, but it gets them faster from point A to point B. It reduces traffic. And of course, with this group mentality idea comes mob mentality, so I do have to address that. Pretty much everything I could find on JSTOR said that mob mentality is bad. However, I would like to challenge that and say that mob mentality is more of a tool that's just been often used for bad, which is why it has such a negative connotation. Um, that is to say that mob mentality has been used for great things. Take, for example, the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement was enacted by millions of Americans, or what we might call a mob. However, it accomplished something very beautiful. It granted the equal rights to all citizens of the United States. And of course, they couldn't do that without their fearless leader, Martin Luther King Jr., which brings us back to the one-to-many communication. And so if there is anything you can take away from this, it is that, yes, we shouldn't forget about ourselves, but more importantly, Put the group first. Thank you. Okay, Ramel, question number one. What information did you need that you weren't able to find or locate, and how did you go about trying to find that information? Um, as I discussed previously, I tried to look a lot for the positives of mob mentality. However, there are very few papers that I could find on this, and that's why I turned to the source uh, Wisdom of the Crowds by James Sirowiecki because he was one of the only authors I could find that said, yes, uh, group collaboration is a good idea. And so I actually had to read like three chapters before I could find any meaningful uh, quotation to use. So I had to use alternative sources. Okay. And how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources you examined? Uh, my conclusion collaborates very greatly with uh, the source uh, speech to the General Assembly by Margaret Thatcher because she establishes this commonality and that correlates almost entirely with the group mentality. So they pretty much go hand in hand with each other. All right, thank you.